During this Episode 3, Masters of the Air Clip, a battle-damaged fuel star V-17 comes to realize it, that it may not have enough fuel to reach land. In order to reduce fuel consumption, the pilot orders the crew to jettison all items not bolted down, including the ball turret. The intent of this video is to review the process and steps the bomber crews took in dropping the ball turret. This is the second time in the series a bomber has jettisoned its ball turret. The first time occurred during Episode 1, where a B-17's right main gear would not extend, so the pilot stowed the left main gear. This way the bomber will land on its belly. Although not shown in the episode, the ball turret was also dropped. You can clearly see the missing ball turret in this image. The B-17 is known as a well-designed, robust, redundant aircraft with good wheels up landing or ditching characteristics. This is due to the large, low-slung wing and the main gear wheels partially exposed when stowed. This image from a declassified 1944 headquarters of the AAF Office of Flight Safety document titled Pilot Training Manual for the Flying Fortress B-17 shows the main gear in the deployed and stowed position. In the stowed state, a portion of the wheel protrudes below the nacelle. On contact, the stowed wheels will provide some flotation, taking the impact loads, minimizing airframe structural damage. The exposed main gear wheels can be seen in these images. To minimize structural damage, the bomber should belly land in the configuration listed, without the ball turret, tail wheel down, and flaps in the three-force position. The flaps are deployed in this image, and the ball turret was jettisoned. In this image, the ball turret dropped, flaps were deployed, and tail wheel was extended. In the Masters of the Air belly landing clip, it looks like the bomber's flaps are deployed, ball turret was jettisoned, but the tail wheel was not deployed. The deployed tail wheel would look like this. This page from a 1944 Army Air Force's material command document titled Index of Army Aeronautical Equipment, Volume 5, outlines the characteristics of the B-17's ball turret and shows an image of the ball turret installed on the B-17. The turret is 46.5 inches in diameter and weighs around 850 pounds. This page outlines the steps to jettison the ball turret. The ball turret is to be dropped to minimize structural airframe damage during a wheels-up landing. The hangar tubular assembly will remain on the bomber. This image outlines features in the position of the B-17's ball turret installed and the components which attach the ball turret to the fuselage. The supporting yoke assembly is highlighted. Only a crescent wrench and hammer will be needed. It will take two crewmen around 20 minutes to complete the task. The turret's barrels are to be pointed down and the four bolts which hold the azimuth case will need to be removed. The azimuth case is located here in this view and in this view. The four safety retaining hooks are to be removed. Two of the four hooks are shaded here and here. They can be removed with a socket wrench or broken off with a hammer. The four yoke fittings are to be disconnected from the turret frame. Each fitting is connected to the frame by three bolts located here and in this view. The oxygen and electrical connections can be removed as an option. If time permits, salvage the Sperry K4 gun sight from the turret. This is an image of the K4 gun sight. The gun sight was expensive. The cost breakdown for the ball turret is shown on this page from a 1947 AAF Historical Studies document titled Development of Aircraft Gun Turrets in the AAF 1917-1944. through 1944. The Sperry K4 gun sight costs $3,700. It will take 20 minutes to remove the gun sight from the turret. By jettisoning the ball turret, the plane's fuel burn should drop due to the weight decrease of 850 pounds. The pilot needs to consider the risk of a water ditching in this situation. If over land, dropping the ball turret makes sense, but less sense when over water where the probability of a water ditching is high. A large 46.5 inch cutout will act as a ram water scoop during a ditching event. This will flood the plane with water quickly, increasing its sinking speed. Ditching a B-17 without the ball turret greatly decreases the crew's ability to egress the airplane. If you found this ball turret drop process review informative, please consider engaging with the video by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.